sexual violence in the Sudan conflict has become as commonplace as the fighting. Every day, Omnia El Gunade wakes with a jolt. As she comes to, she says her first urge is to suffocate herself with the pillow she rests her head on. Her second thought is of the herbs gathered into a bag close by her, the ones she collected desperately and alone to prevent pregnancy in the event of being raped. Terror took hold in Sudan early last year when fighting broke out in the capital of Khartoum, raising fears of a return to full-scale civil war. Since April, the conflict has killed more than 10,000 people and displaced 5.6 million. On one side are the militiamen of the Rapid Support Forces, RSF, a paramilitary with a deeply violent history, and on the other is the Sudanese Armed Forces, SAF. In the middle are women, like 21-year-old Omina, who are terrified of the sexual violence that has become commonplace amid the fighting. The United Nations has reported the widespread use of rape by the RSF, which has occupied civilian neighborhoods in Khartoum and Omdurman as it battles Sudan's army for control. Now, women are trying to take back what little control they can have over themselves. They are sharing advice on social media on which contraceptives women should carry on themselves at all times, and how to collect herbs they believe will prevent pregnancy. Female Sudanese activists started sharing tips on how to avoid pregnancy if it, rape, happens, said Omnia. Many Sudanese girls are in active war zones, and I have saved those social media posts just in case because we feel so unsafe. The methods included some medication, like the morning pills, as well as certain herbs. Experts say herbs are ineffective, but that carrying emergency contraception, including the morning after pill and pre-exposure prophylaxis, used to reduce the risk of getting HIV- would be more effective. Omnia told The Telegraph that rumors of sexual violence reached her within weeks of the eruption of violence in Khartoum. I have heard of them raping girls and women in front of their brothers or fathers, knowing that's all it takes to break them, she said. When they, the RSF, invaded, they went on the rampage. According to the UN, hundreds of women have been detained by the RSF, held in inhuman or degrading conditions, subjected to sexual assault, and left vulnerable to sexual slavery. Sudanese women and girls in urban centers as well as in Darfur have been particularly vulnerable to violence, a UN expert said. It is alleged that men identified as members of the RSF are using rape and sexual violence of women and girls as tools to punish and terrorize communities. The UN has recorded sightings of chained-up women and girls being taken away in pickup trucks and cars. There are reports of them being subject to enforced disappearance and forced marriages, and in some cases, being held by RSF fighters after they have become pregnant. Those in urban areas like Khartoum, which remains under RSF control, and those in the western Darfur region are most vulnerable. After violence erupted, Omnia fled Khartoum for the city of Wad Madani, a perilous 84-mile journey, and then traveled from there to a rural village. Before fleeing, she logged into her Twitter account, searching for the advice women had shared with her for if the unthinkable were to happen. I gathered the right herbs before I fled Medani, she said. I can't even describe how it felt to be forced to gather the herbs, but it felt ugly, and I was filled with rage and misery. I couldn't imagine this happening to me. She carried the herbs with her as she and her mother fled Wad Madani by car. When the car was looted by the RSF, they fled on foot through hidden roads and shortcuts to avoid encountering more of their forces. I felt despair as we fled, she said. Now, Omnia spends her days hiding in the village with her mother, a psychologist working with victims of sexual violence by the RSF, constantly aware that the violence could soon follow them. Every day I wake up and realize that I haven't been dreaming and this is all reality, she said. It's becoming more tiring each day to wake up and function. I have lost so much weight. I hope something changes. Is it going to end, or is it going to end me?